that's really the headline. That's Mike it. Mike Williams joins yes. the New York Jets. He was cut last week by the Chargers in lieu of paying him $20 million for 2024, coming off of a torn ACL, suffered early last season in what was his last season with the Chargers. He's one of the handful of guys that was drafted before Patrick Mahomes. He'll always have that distinction. Seventh overall by the Chargers in 2017. Now he's playing with Aaron Rodgers and Garrett Wilson. And when you look at the depth chart, the receiver depth chart for the Jets, they really did, Chris, have a glaring right. Need. Alan Lazard was a disaster last year. Maybe he'll be better if Rodgers is playing, but it was bad last year. Healthy scratch for the Black Friday game, I think it was, just because they like the guy he was he was leapfrogged by undrafted rookie free agents. They needed help on that receiving core and they get it with Mike Williams. Yeah, they definitely do. Get, get a guy who, you know, when healthy is a pain in the butt. That's for sure, right? You said it. They need the, they needed the player, the proven commodity, as I always say. You can't look at anybody on there, you know, other than Lazard and Garrett Wilson and go, oh, well, we can depend on him. There's some some potential guys. But Mike Williams, I mean, he serves a role, and especially for a guy like Aaron Rodgers, who's such a great thrower at back shoulder throws, right? That's where Mike Williams, the size of the human being, you know, being 6'4", being a guy that can stretch stretch the, the defense and work downfield, catch the ball over the middle. That's where there's going to be great value. We know that, like, Garrett Wilson's going to be the go-to guy. They're going to formulate a lot of the offense around him. But Mike Williams is one of those guys, again, that can do a little bit of everything. But most importantly, he's kind of like, hey, he's an X receiver. You can line him outside by himself and go, hey, he can beat the better corners in football one-on-one. -on -one. And even if he doesn't beat them, he's kind of one of those guys, even if he's covered, he's not covered. You still throw him the ball. But I do, and to your point, Mike, with Alan Lazard, I think this makes Alan Lazard better, right? Alan Lazard's not a number two. That's not who he is, right? This is what we argued up in Green Bay when we were going, they need more support from Rodgers. Alan Lazard in the perfect world is a really, really good number three. And now he can be that. He's not going to be dependent on having to win outside against the good corners. He'll be able to work the middle of the field a little bit more, which is what he does. And then you got Wilson and uh, Mike Williams on the outside. And I think that's going to help Alan Lazard, let alone Mike Williams is going to help out the whole offense and Aaron Rodgers. Lazard's got $10 million guaranteed coming to him this year. Right. Fully and completely guaranteed as part of the deal he signed last year. The Williams deal reportedly is worth up to $15 million. Let me tell you something. I put this on Twitter yesterday or X or whatever. Up to is doing a lot of work this week. <laughs> up to, that, that's, that's the way now that, like, because maybe some of the reporters got sensitive because some jerk was saying that they just pass along bull crap without asking questions and, they end up lying to the audience, and they view it as an occupational hazard. You throw on up to, and you can cover up a lot of stuff. Like the Tyron Smith deal, the tackle signed by Holy the Jets cow. on Friday. Right. Up to $20 million. We had the full breakdown at PFT yesterday. It is $6.5 million, and he's got to hit playing time benchmarks to get his money. Separate and apart from a $1.5 million incentive package based on playoff wins and Pro Bowl, it's all playing time, all the way up to 98%. He's got to be in 98% of the offensive snaps to get his full playtime incentive to get 6.5, anywhere close to 20. So anytime you see the words, kids, up to, I mean, it's two bits of advice right out of the gates today. Number one, don't eat food that shows up at your house unless you know who cooked it. And number two, anytime you see up to in the report, presume that the real number is a lot lower than whatever the up to amount is. Yeah, I, I, that's right. I mean, what the Jets got here is, uh, you know, two guys, uh, Mike Williams less than Tyrone Smith, where you go, if they stay healthy, this will be, they will be great additions to the team. But of course, there's the if factor. And I think there's definitely more of the if factor with Tyrone Smith, definitely. But the Jets have made appropriate moves on the offensive line and I'm sure they're not done yet and we'll see where the draft goes too maybe they do something there as well uh, but Mike Williams you know you said second week ACL injury it's the type of the time of the year that you'd go well I think he'd be you know okay and, and maybe not a hundred percent for training camp at the start of the season but not too far off from it having that much uh, that much time 
So that that's where you'll like it too, right? And I, I think the Jets, you know, they, they might have struck gold here with getting a guy like this. This guy, when he is healthy, he is a explosive, down-the-field, playmaking type of receiver. He's got very good speed for being as big as he is, so he can stretch the field. Look at, you know, here's great examples right here. Way to go, guys, in the back, right on point here. I mean, look at the yards per catch. Look what he's doing when he's getting it. 48, he had... You know, one year he had 49 catches for 1,000 yards. I mean, that that's insane numbers when you start to throw it out there. It tells you he can work down the field, catch the deep balls, do all of that. Now, the big thing is, too, when I go with Mike Williams, he'll be good, you know, intermediate slants, all that, right? He's good in that way, and we know Aaron Rodgers likes to do that. Will Aaron Rodgers take advantage of what he can do down the field? Right, the last time we saw Aaron Rodgers on the field healthy in Green Bay, our big complaint, right? Anybody that kind of you talk to in football too is Rodgers lacks the aggressiveness to let it fly into some tight windows and take advantage of big plays that are there. He plays too careful, you know. Hopefully, a guy like Mike Williams will break him out of the shell with a good old line that protects him. You know, I think that'll be necessary for the Jets to be a real player in the AFC. And because we are committed to full and complete accuracy and transparency here at PFT Live, it was a week three injury. Not trying to. Be oh, sorry. All good. Yeah, I got we you. Just want to make sure we yeah. get this. Awesome. Because look, September twenty four is when it happened. Right. Here's here's the reality, Chris. Regardless of whether it was week two, week three, whatever, we've seen plenty of guys who take a full year. Yeah. Before they're back right. to who they were. Right. And we just don't know. And I don't know. The Jets can know. There's no physical examination you right. can do there's no MRI that's going to tell you this guy is going to come back and be the guy he was before the injury right away that he's not going to need a year to do it but you know what the guy had other visits lined up Carolina and Pittsburgh if he left the Jets and remember last year what happened to the Jets yeah they thought Odo Beckham Jr. was showing up right the Ravens picked him off before he could even get there they get Mike Williams in the building they don't want it to blow up on them again. And I wouldn't be surprised if there was a conversation at some level of the organization about what happened last year. We thought Beckham was coming in and we lost him. We're not going to lose it this time. We've all been through that in our lives in some capacity, whether it's, man, we almost got that house and we didn't get it next time. We're not going to screw around. Almost got that car and didn't get it. Almost got that other thing and didn't get it next time. We're not going to screw around. And I feel like this time they weren't going to screw around. They were going to get a guy to help the offense to help Aaron Rodgers. And I think it does close the door on OBJ, but who knows at this point, maybe they, maybe they do find a way to bring him in as well. It wouldn't completely stun me, but he's not going to get what he got last year. No, he got 15 million guaranteed last year. Williams is getting up to 15 million. He's going to have to play a lot. I assume catch some passes more than a few to unlock whatever it is that gets him to the 15 million. I, I would think so, right? I mean, Mike, what, what's your guesstimation about what it really is? Not, you know, $10 million contract, right? With may, maybe all the incentives and everything like that. You know, is it lower than that? Is it eight or I'd nine? I'd put the over yeah. under at nine and a half. Okay. I'd put the over under all at right. nine and a half because that's the spot where I really wouldn't know. And I'd be inclined to go under. I'll say eight and a half over under because then I really don't know whether to go over or under with everything else in the form of playing time it had to be enough though to get him to take it that's the thing it can't be the tyron smith deal i don't know if i mentioned this on friday or monday monday the deal happened friday night the jets didn't think he was going to take it i caught wind that they were talking to him the day before but they didn't think he was going to take it because it was a low ball heavy incentive there's no way he's going to take this it's just a leverage deal to try to get somebody to offer him better and then he takes it like holy holy crap he took it so I, I doubt that was the case with Mike Williams because he was still going to go to Carolina and then Pittsburgh. It had to be enough to get him. Or maybe the sandwich did do it. I don't know. Well, sandwich. And get it, maybe you get in the it ballpark. You, know, you are New York. It's it the Jets. It's Aaron Rodgers. As long as you're in the ballpark or close, if I'm like a guy like Mike Williams, I'm going, well, ballpark close. Wait, uh, Carolina, whoa, they've got a lot of work to do. I don't know if that's going to help me strike it rich for next year after this one-year deal. Pittsburgh, uh you know, I'm Who not knows? sure there either, right? You don't know either, right? I mean, if you're being a player and putting yourself in Mike Williams' shoes, New York's the safe bet. It's the safe bet, right? It's not perfect, but I think for, for the situation and what he had available to him, it's the safest out of those three. And then, you know, you, you talk about, well, I can play with Aaron Rodgers, and if he's healthy, right, you know, watch out. I could put up the type of numbers to where – 
hey, next year I can get back to $20 million a year type of payday. And I think that's probably what Mike Williams had on his radar as well, uh, just the fit and, and what he can maximize out of that fit. And he was averaging $20 million a year, and it came down to that last year with the Chargers. They ripped it up instead of keeping him around for that $20 million. And you see why they weren't able to trade him. No one was going to take on the $20 million commitment sight unseen without understanding where he is, without having some protections in there like this deal for the Jets has. With a lower number, they can be inflated to 15 based upon presumably playing time, performance, factors of that nature. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.